Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we are launching a new series talking about night vision. Uh, not only night vision goggles, but IR lasers and IR emitters and different types of optics, the setup on your rifle, and just trying to learn how to uh, really shoot in the dark uh, utilizing night vision technology. Uh, this is not going to be necessarily a tutorial as to what you should do rather than being more of a set of videos talking about what I am doing and the setup that I'm doing, the reasons why I'm going the routes that I'm going and maybe provide you guys with some information to take back and further digest and consider when setting up your own personal setup as well. So um, let's kind of dive into it. We're going to talk about first and foremost the rifle that I'm going to start using as my platform for night vision. This is my Aero Precision M4E1 and this has changed quite a bit since I first built it about four years ago. It started off as an AR pistol with a 12.5 inch ballistics advantage barrel but you'll remember last year we had some shenanigans going on with the ATF we're still waiting to see what's going to happen with that when it comes to uh, AR AK pistols so I went ahead and decided um, I'm not going to deal with that anymore I swapped out the barrel to a 14.5 pin and welded with a dead air flash hider to make it an overall length of 16 inches and was a then able to make this into a rifle. Uh, so this is uh, my current setup and I went with this on another level because in the area that I live in, I have the ability to be in an urban environment. I have a ability to be in a rural environment within just minutes. Um, I, I mean, literally, I drive this way and I'm in urban. I drive that way five minutes and I'm in a pasture that would need to shoot three, four, five hundred yards. 14.5 is really going to uh, help me stretch those legs to get out that far. Not to say you couldn't do it with the 12.5, but I feel more confident with a bit of longer barrel. So there's that. I also have it coupled with a Daniel Defense fixed front sight, a Matek uh, rear sight, and then the Sig Sauer Romeo 5. This has actually been a really, really good optic uh, for a budget option when it comes to kind of a T1, T2 style of an optic. It's a good crisp two MOA dots, got the shake awake features, uh, but I did find a major Achilles heel with this and uh, LED emitted red dots as well, uh, especially going through Chris Costa's set one and two course last year. That was a three day carving course that uh, went through three days of rain. Sometimes mist, sometimes sprinkle, sometimes downpour. It was nasty out there. And one of the biggest issues that I found was I was having a hard time picking up my red dot because of all the water on the front lens. Now with LED style red dots, they're using the front lens to reflect that dot back to your eye. So if you get anything on the front lens, could cause the distortion and it's going to make it very difficult to aim and that's one of the reasons why I'm moving away from the Romeo 5. Last thing I got is a Surefire M300 on here so that's my white light and uh, yeah that pretty much covers the basic setup of this particular rifle. So uh, let's talk about the optic that I'm choosing and that's what this video is going to be about step one setting up your rifle and I think the probably the best place to start is deciding which optic that you're going to want to use naturally you're going to want to find an optic that is going to allow you to um, passively aim with night vision goggles on and the optic that I have chosen to do that is going to be the EOTech EXPS 3. Now before we start talking about this real quick I want to take a second to say a huge thank you to Combat Wombat. Uh, he's a good friend of mine from Instagram. Uh, we uh, play video games on Friday nights on occasion and uh, I've really kind of leaned on him 
on occasion to ask him, you know, kind of what to do with this or what to do with that. He's got uh, a lot of great information on niche or nuanced weapons and stuff like that. And uh, he sent this optic to me and has decided to let me keep it. So that is pretty awesome. And it's been an optic that I've wanted to take a look at for a a very very long time. Now that I've had uh, a little bit of time to mess around with this, I've decided that this is going to be the optic that I uh, go ahead and move forward with in my night vision setup. We're going to talk about the reasons why, but I did want to take a moment to say a huge thank you to Wombat. Brother, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, so EOTech is probably one of the premier companies out on the market that produce holographic sights and before we get into anything about this particular optic we got to talk about the elephant in the room when it comes to EOTech. Yes the DOD sued EOTech several years back because of thermal drift and uh, rounds impacting differently than where the optic was aiming at because of increases or decreases in temperature and uh, that was a major issue. Since that time, EOTech took their lumps and went in, redesigned what they needed to redesign to make a better optic, and guess what? EOTech is now a you know, DOD US government contractor with this particular optic, so obviously they have fixed the issues. So anyone who's going to talk about you know, EOTech getting sued about DOD, yeah, they did. I'm acknowledging that. And uh, they fixed their problems and we have this now. So um, I've experienced no major issues with this so far. And um, that's one reason why I'm going ahead and choosing this on top of so many different options out there. But there are some other major reasons why I'm choosing this as well. Okay, so let's talk about it. Like I said, holographic sights. So that is right off the bat a huge advantage this sight over any type of LED emitted red dot. And the reason why is because an LED red dot sight such as a Romeo 5 or a Aimpoint T1 relies on that front lens to reflect that dot back to your eye as I previously mentioned. So if anything happens to that front lens, it gets wet, it gets scratched, uh, it gets cracked, um, then that red dot is going to be distorted in some form or fashion. With the EOTech and its holographic technology, you don't have that problem. So if you get anything on the lenses, they get scratched, cracked, they get knocked out completely, you're still going to be able to see that reticle and it's probably not going to be distorted or at least as distorted as a standard LED red dot. That's number one. Number two, if you have eye issues like astigmatisms or something like that, LED red dots may cause you to see a starburst pattern or may cause you to see multiple red dots. And uh, I've struggled through that. I have always seen a bit of a starburst pattern in my red dots. They've never been a crisp dot to me. So being able to utilize the EOTech and see a crisp dot that has been a game changer for me and has allowed me to better understand uh, what a good reticle looks like. This is also going to have that 68 MOA donut of death is what they call. And I really do also like that because that gives me the ability to have quick acquisition of my reticle as I'm aiming in, you know, pretty close, I would say probably, um, anywhere between three yards to 25 yards, uh, that 68 MOA donut is going to get you right on target really, really quickly without having to focus in on that uh, single point dot in the center of it. So that's another thing that I really do like about it. Another great aspect about this is going to be the objective lens. This is going to be far larger than the 20 MOA 
uh, objective lenses that you're going to fi find, say, like on the Romeo 5. So this is going to have a larger window for you to look through, find that reticle. In addition to that, if you're going to use this to passively aim through MVGs, you're also going to have a larger objective window to be able to look through that as well, utilizing a uh, night vision goggle. So that is another huge bonus. I also like how it is pretty high up, basically has a, an internal built-in riser because of how they have constructed this and all the different technologies that's involved on this. It does have a quick detached lever here. You just push, let's say push in here and then flip that out and you're able to attach directly onto the top rail of any type of rifle, which I really do like as well. However, um, even though this is a absolute co-witness as it stands right now, I'm actually going to put this on a riser to bring this up. So I'm going to be a bit of a more chin well with this optic to allow me to passively aim through my goggles. So uh, we'll talk about that here in just a second. The last big thing that I would say about this optic is the fact that it is built extremely tough. Uh, this is going to have a aluminum shroud around the uh, optic and the lenses. So, uh, you know, anything coming in, hitting up against it is probably going to hit this shroud rather than the lenses first. So that is another great aspect about this and makes it kind of being built like a tank. So. These are some of the major reasons why I've gone with the EXPS3 instead of other things like a T1 or a T2 uh, or other optics that may be out there or even sticking with my Romeo 5. Even though the Romeo 5 still has uh, night vision capability, this has night vision capability uh, and that's one of the telltale signs that you uh, can figure out which one to get because they have the EXPS2 and then you have the EXPS3. The 3 will have the night vision settings uh, so you're not uh, having that reticle blow your, uh, your MVG out because it's so bright. So there is a lot of the pros that's going on uh, with this optic. Now let's talk about some of the biggest detractors when it comes to this optic. First and foremost is going to be the weight. This alone is going to be 11 ounces and then if you add any type of riser for uh, you know night vision goggles to be able to passively aim, um, then you're going to add additional weight to that as well. Uh, standard T1, T2, Romeo 5 with a riser is going to be coming in somewhere around the 7 to 8 ounce mark. This is 11 ounces plus the riser, so you're talking over double the weight that uh, you would expect to get um, with a standard red dot. So that's something you're going to need to consider because if you're going to be you know, walking around with a rifle and this optic, you're going to add ounces to your setup. Ounces lead to pounds and pounds lead to pain, especially if you're going to be you know, moving around, doing things with your rifle all day long. You're going to need to train up for that. So just keep that into uh, consideration first and foremost. Okay, the next thing is going to be battery. Now, one of the great things that EOTech did was they changed the type of battery that it takes to a CR123, and then they changed the orientation to be from parallel, like the 512s, to a perpendicular uh, pattern. And that really saves the springs on the battery to ensure that you're going to maximize battery life and you're not gonna have to worry about your springs wearing out because of all the recoil of the rifle. So that's good. However, the flip side of the coin is <clears throat> because of the holographic technology, battery life on this is going to be about a thousand hours depending on how much you use it, depending on the setting that you have it set on so on and so forth, that is, that's one of the areas that a lot of people are just like, you know what, no, I'm not going to do that. I've decided to go ahead and forego that aspect of it because I know that, number one, I can turn off an optic if I need to, 
and I can turn it on really quick. Uh, so having a shorter battery life is not going to be that big of a deal, but also all of the pros that come with this optic ends up defeating the cons that I see that could cause me to have issues. Uh, so the battery life uh, being one of those issues, it's not going to be that big of an issue for me because realistically my night vision setup, my night vision rifle is not going to be the one that I'm defending my home with. So I really don't have to worry about having shake awake technology. All right, so there you have it, the EXPS 3 from EOTech. Uh, so far I've only had this on my uh, Tommy Belt G36C clone. Uh, had a lot of fun shooting it from there, but I've decided that this is going to be, like I said, the night vision optic of choice. Now, what am I going to couple that with? That is going to be the Unity Tactical riser. And this is going to really be uh, a cool little setup because not only um, will these pair well uh, with each other, but once I uh, set these set these up and have this riser on this optic, this is going to put me at 2.26 inches overall height. Now there's some pros and cons to that as well. First off, the pro on that is that's gonna get me pretty high up, so I'm going to be kind of a chin well on this optic, and I'm going to be able to uh, you know, be able to passively aim utilizing my PVS-14. However, the downside to that is if for some reason something happens to this and I no longer have the ability to uh, utilize this optic, um, then I'm going to kind of not be able to co-witness, even a lower third co-witness uh, with this setup with my iron sights. Um, but the counter argument to that is you've got that quick disconnect lever here. Uh, take me just a moment and I can pull that off and get back into what I was doing. I know that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work for everybody or every situation, but uh, between these two, uh, I believe that this is going to get me started into having a setup that is going to be extremely conducive into um, pulling all this together. So uh, let's go ahead and put this on the rifle and we'll be right back. Okay, so here we go. We've got it set up on the rifle here. And um, man, I tell you what, it looks great. Uh, the Unity Tactical Mount it fits in perfectly. There's no wobble, there's no movement back and forth. Uh, naturally, I'm going to Loctite these down once I determine where exactly I want on the uh, upper receiver. That's gonna take some trial and error with my PVS-14. And with the rail, um, with the riser itself, uh, you're going to be able to move this optic further forward or some uh, a little bit further back if you want to, and I like that as well. It's also giving me a lot of space here, so if I wanted to do a, um, you know, a magnifier, I could do that as well. So, you know, gives me a lot of options and still gives me plenty of room out here to put any type of uh, IR emitter or laser, um, you know, pressure pads and so on and so forth. Uh, my front sight post will more than likely either uh, move back uh, so that I can get the uh, IR laser and my IR setup uh, up here. And then uh, probably we'll have to move some things around. But uh, as it stands right now, here's what we've got. Like I mentioned, uh, here is the aiming point for your uh, rear sight not able to co-witness, can't even lower one third, but these will stay on here because like I said, I can just um, take that off just like that. And now I have the ability to co-witness as I need to. So um, there we have it. There is the EXPS3 on my Aero Precision M4E1. Um, this is going to be uh, quite the adventure in setting all of this up. So let me know what you guys think. What is your setup? 
as far as your night vision rifle goes, uh, sound off in the comment section down below. I would love to hear what you guys got going. Uh, share your experiences because I read the comments and I learn a lot from you guys as well. If you guys are interested, I do have a newsletter that I'm putting out each and every single week to not only tell you guys what's going on with the channel, but to also give you some deals of the week, some ammunition uh, finds to save you money, and then also find you guys some training across the country as well. That training is going to be with instructors that I have either trained with myself or am hoping to train with in the future. So if you guys are interested in that, sign up over at fitandfire.com. It's right on the homepage, you can't miss it. And um, get in on the giveaways. I, give, I do a giveaway every single month. So uh, don't, don't pass up uh, any of those. Ah. All right, so there you go. New series, a lot of information to discuss. And we're gonna start kind of snowballing all of this together as we go through all of these videos. So thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.